Hey guys, sometimes there are things that go on behind the scenes here and rather than make you guys wait for the next build video, I thought you would be interested in watching a test where I attempted to cut the dummy C2 binder with a slitting saw. Before we get started, and because the thumbnail and title of this video is clickbaity, it's likely to be seen by uh, new viewers and I have a few disclaimers uh, with that in mind. So I'm not a machinist and you guys who subscribe to the channel know that I like to try doing stupid things sometimes, both wittingly and unwittingly. The stuff in this video is unwittingly. I did have a feeling things would not go smoothly and that's why I did the test. All right, with that out of the way, one last thing before we get started. Rody Walter has a video of the right way to do what I am about to do. So if you want to see a C2 binder cut properly, I'll have a link in the video description to Rody's video. Okay, this is a three and one half by one eighth inch thick uh, 30 tooth slitting saw. I picked this up on Amazon for $9.46. So off camera a day earlier, I had already tested this saw and it went very badly. Uh, I then decided to show you guys in this video just how badly it went. So that's why part of the binder is already cut. First thing uh, you can see and hear is that the saw is not concentric, which was really no surprise because it is a $9 saw. But really, the biggest problem I had was the saw just did not want to cut without a ton of vibration. So much vibration that it was causing the fine down feed to move on its own, even though I had the head locked. Uh, for some reason, at the time of this test, I couldn't get the down feed to move on its own, maybe because I was running at less RPM. I'm not sure why. I couldn't get it to reproduce the uh, movement, though. There are three contributing factors to why I think maybe this isn't working. Um, it's a mini mill and it's not rigid enough or powerful enough to run a saw of this diameter and thickness. And the tooth count is too few. So that was one. Uh, two, because the tooth count is so low, I had to run at higher RPM so it would not uh, get stuck. Doing so dulls the saw pretty quickly. And three, the saw has a flat on the tip of the cutting area. I realized this was a problem later on and I'll explain that more in a bit. All this stuff combined was causing the saw to push the workpiece away rather than cut it. I could feel this uh, a lot as I was turning the knob to move the table. So to solve um, what, problem one, I purchased a smaller slitting saw. The saw has a diameter of 63 millimeters and a thickness of one millimeter. It's got 72 teeth and I got it off Amazon for a whopping $6.42. So again, this saw is also not concentric. I loosened it, wiggled it, and then retightened it to uh, try and get it as concentric as I could. I think part of the non-concentricity had to do also with the cheap arbor I was using. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Alright, well it's basically not any better than the larger saw. Only difference is there's less vibration. But as far as cutting goes, uh, it's sucking pretty bad. So I pulled the uh, saw away from the workpiece more so it wasn't trying to cut as much material at once. And uh, I also slowed the, um, the RPMs down. And in doing so, because this thing doesn't have a lot of torque, so it kept getting stuck and, uh, and stopping. So I stopped. And here's how far I got with the cut. 
Looks like I managed to shave off a depth of one millimeter. After thinking about it for a while, I thought to myself, why is it possible that a hole saw can cut pretty easily through the same exact material and this saw cannot? My theory is uh, the shape of the teeth. So they're flat at the tip. When I run my fingernail over the teeth, I don't feel like a sharp surface. So it's like not cutting into my fingernail. Um, I can just glide my fingernail over the surface. So this being a uh, $6 saw, I sharpen the tip to a point on the uh, belt sander. After I was done with my hack job, I ran my nail over the teeth and it felt pretty sharp. So I gave it a go. You can see here I have the saw cutting deeper. I found that uh, by doing this, the saw cannot push the work away as much. The cut went really, really slow, but it did indeed cut a lot better than before. I moved the saw lower and proceeded to cut the bottom half. It cut okay, but I could feel the blade was getting dull again because I was getting that uh, pushing feeling again and it was kind of hard to turn the dial. The uh, fingernail test and it is dull again. Being a $6 saw, it's uh, highly likely that the high speed steel it's made of is not that hard. Uh, either, either that or I'm abusing the saw beyond its intended use. All said and done, uh, it kind of worked okay. For this last bit, I wanted to see how the steel would react to a cutoff blade on an angle grinder. And this is the wrong blade. I had an idea if the slitting saw didn't work out to find a way to fixture the angle grinder and then using a cross sliding vise, uh, feed the binder into the disc. So I was curious how much the steel burns and how fast it could cut if I were to um, try doing this. I think with a conservative feed rate and maybe misting the part with a spray bottle to keep heat under control, um, this method could possibly work. Uh, anyway, it's an option if the slitting saw doesn't work out. Anyway guys, these are my tests for now. I have another slitting saw being shipped out to me. This one was made in America and cost me $26. So I'm hoping this will do the job. That's all for now. Uh, don't forget, I'll have a link to Rody's video where uh, he does the binder cutting thing right. And also for you new folks, a link to the long tail build series, which was the whole purpose of these tests. 
Until next time, see you guys later.